Yeah, I guess I have to admit it. I'm privileged. I am a higher middle class white American. But this isn't where my privilege ends. Surprised? Don't be. We are a family of beautiful people. I'm serious. We're literally all beautiful. My dad, my mom, my brothers, and me. Yeah, you might be like, Are you supposed to call men beautiful? But what else can I say? The word handsome is not enough to describe the guys in my family. They are, in fact, beautiful. Before we go on, quickly hit the like and subscribe button if you want my life. Come on, you know you secretly do. No one has to know. Now that you've done that, let's move on. Everyone admired us and wanted to be like us. We weren't just beautiful, we were smart. We aced all our classes. We all had leadership positions in school, in church, and in the community. Everyone knew and worshipped our family. Everybody wanted to date one of us. Even our exes bragged about us. Yeah, I used to date Lucy. Yeah, she broke up with me after only a few weeks, but at least I dated her. Did you ever have a chance to date her? No? So shut up! Only a few lucky people could get their hands on any one of us, though. Why, you may ask? Well, because you had to be extremely attractive to date one of the Cargills. Our parents had high standards, and you couldn't bring home anyone who didn't match these standards. Whoever you were bringing home as a boyfriend or girlfriend had to be rich, smart, athletic, and most importantly, as beautiful or even more beautiful than our family members. What else would you expect? We were the perfect family. It was fun growing up, I must admit. People worshipped us. I always felt like a demigoddess. Wait, it was more than that. I was practically a goddess, not a demigoddess. When I was almost done with high school, I met a nice guy in the library. He was cute, nerdy, and funny. He was also smart and had read all of my favorite books. We had a lot in common and shortly became very close friends. We were platonic <laughs> friends. I had no romantic interest or involvement with him at that point. I never even planned to. He didn't fit the dating standard for Cargill family members, and I was in a serious relationship with Bendile Siabonga, the most attractive boy in our high school. He was drop-dead gorgeous, the best music student, and the captain of the football team. He was also mixed breed, part South African, part Italian, so you can imagine just how attractive he was. One Saturday, I invited Jordy, my nerdy friend, over to study. He was supposed to help me dissect a few math problems that had been giving me a headache. I didn't think inviting him over would be a problem because I wasn't dating him. And even if I was, he was kind of cute in my childish eyes. Mom knew I was in a serious relationship with Bendile, so I never expected her to react the way she did when she saw me and Jordy studying and laughing in the kitchen. What exactly is happening here? She asked as she stormed into the kitchen. Who is this toad? Jeez, Mom, you can't just go around calling people toads. I've told you this before, I tried whispering. Well, I wouldn't have to if you stopped hanging out with him, Mom replied. Hmm. Jordy looked confused. Wait, who's the toad? Am I the toad you guys are referring to? No! Yes. My mom and I spoke at the same time. Mom, look, young man, she said, turning to Jordy. You must have lost your way. This is the house for princes and princesses. We don't accept toads in our territory. So whatever way you hopped in, please hop out and never return. My mom said while pretending to be a hopping toad. Jordy looked like he was going to burst out laughing any second. Wow, somebody is cuckoo, he said, pointing to his head. My mom got even more angry and tried to drag him out of the house, but Jordy stopped her, saying, Ma'am, if you touch me, I promise to press charges. My dad is a cop. Wow, poor, stupid, and ugly. Ooh, I'm so scared. Please don't tell daddy. Please don't press charges, mom said, mocking him. Cuckoo. Jordy Cuckoo. kept whistling as he majestically Cuckoo. walked out of the house. Once he was gone, my mom turned to me. Let this be the last time you bring a toad into my castle, Lucy. Oh my god! Mom! You're actually crazy! I screamed as I packed my study books and left for my room. I apologized to Jordy and we continued being friends in secret. Mom never knew. We kept it from everyone. Jordy <laughs> later became my best friend. After high school, I got admitted into MIT, while Bandile got a scholarship to study in some sports college far away. Our relationship died due to the long distance. At MIT, I met a beautiful girl. She kept short hair and always wore crop tops and baggy trousers. 
She had tattoos and piercings, all abominations in the Cargill family. She was so attractive and very soon, we started dating. At first, I thought something was wrong with me. So I kept going to church and asking God to forgive me for dating her. With time though, I later got to understand that it was perfectly normal, but I still couldn't tell my parents. My new girlfriend, Lit, kept insisting on meeting my parents. I had met hers and they were such sweethearts. I had to call Jordy to ask him for advice. Hmm, Lucy, I've met your mother and I don't think any other person on this planet should ever have the displeasure of meeting her again. I laughed. I keep trying to tell Lit that my mother will not accept us, but she's always insisting. I don't know what to do. Save enough money because once you make this decision, there's no going back. You might get disowned. Are you ready for that? Anything for Lit, I said as I hung up. It still took me a full year to summon up the courage to do it. During my second year, I invited Lit over to our family getaway for the Christmas holidays. I knew that it was going to be a crazy Christmas. Mm -hmm. After everyone was done hugging and welcoming me, my mother turned to Lit then back to me. Lucy? She said with a forced smile. What did I tell you about bringing Toto? God! Mom! Lit is not a toad! She's my girlfriend! Everyone went silent. This kind of abomination had never happened in our home before. What? Mom asked in a very tiny voice, almost like she was about to cry. What did you just say? Lit is my girlfriend, I repeated. Guess what my mother did next? She jumped at Lit like a tiger about to strike its prey, but my dad was able to catch her before she landed on Lit. I blocked Lit immediately. She was trying to be strong, but I could see the tears in her eyes. Dad calmed Mom down and took her inside. Everyone pretended nothing had happened, and we were able to pretend that Lit was actually a toad boy whom I wasn't dating for a full week. Mom never acknowledged her presence. I went grocery shopping one day and somehow managed to forget my purse, so I had to drive back home immediately. As I got to the staircase, I started hearing voices from behind it. It was Mom and Lit. Yeah, I'm sure you think you do. My mom smirked. I really do, ma'am. I love Lucy with all of my heart. Oh, really? Then I guess I don't need this million-dollar check I was about to give you. A million-dollar check? Lit asked, her eyes sparkling. You betcha, my mom replied. I've also booked a plane ticket for you back home. First class. Have you ever flown first class before? No, Lit replied, stunned. Well, this will be your first time. I want you to be very comfortable, mom said. Lit tried to grab the check from my mother, but she stretched her hand higher up so Lit couldn't reach it. I'm sure you know what the condition is, Lit. I know, Lit replied. You want me to leave Lucy forever? I took a deep breath. I couldn't start crying now. I just couldn't. Mom finally gave Lit the check. Your things have been packed already and the limo is outside waiting for you. Follow the back door and leave immediately. Lit turned and started leaving, but Mom stopped her. Wait, stop. Yes, ma'am? Lit asked. Have I ever told you just how stupid your name is? What kind of person names a child Lit? Mom asked with an evil smile on her face. Naming a child Lit is almost like naming a child Failure Guaranteed. Now leave my house and never return. I couldn't believe it. Lit actually took the check, followed the back, got into the limo and left. I fell on the floor and started sobbing. I felt a hand on my back and turned. It was Mom. And that is how you remove filth from beautiful gardens. She tapped my back and left. I was so angry. I got up and entered my car. I was going to confront Lit. How dare she? After everything I'd done for her? No way was she just going to leave me like that. I followed the limo. I was going to stop her from getting on the plane. Surprisingly, once the limo dropped her at the airport and left, she entered another cab and stopped at a hotel. She took her luggage and checked herself in. I was parked outside, trying to summon the courage to confront her when my phone rang. It was lit. It took me a few seconds to pick up the phone, but I finally did. Hello? Hey babe, you will not believe what just happened. What happened? I asked, playing dumb. She told me that she was in a hotel but would explain everything to me once I met her up. She gave me her address and I told her that I was on my way. I sat in the car for a little bit longer before coming out. Then I went straight to her hotel room. Lucy! She ran and hugged me, but I didn't hug back. What's the problem? I stared at her in disgust. What's the problem? Well, I'll tell you what the problem is. You're evil. I know what you did. I know everything. Huh? 
Lit was confused. I know you took a million dollar check from my mother in exchange for leaving me. How dare you, you ungrateful twat. Lit took a deep breath. She brought out the check. Take it and leave. I was confused. Take it and get out. Did I leave? Aren't you with me right now? Who called you to come here, huh? Who's in a hotel room instead of an airplane, huh? Who told you the address of the hotel room? She started crying. I thought for a second and realized my mistake. I didn't think. I had acted out of anger. OMG, you weren't going to leave me. Yes, you dummy. I can't believe you'd say such mean things to me. Now I want to leave. I spent the next hour apologizing to her. She finally forgave me and told me that she only took the money because she felt we could elope with it or go on an expensive vacation at least. She was never going to break up with me. I hugged her and we reconciled. I was driving back home to get my passport and a few clothes when I noticed mom's car parked in a weird spot. When mom stepped out of the car, I noticed how she was dressed. In all black, a long gown, boots, a scarf, huge sunglasses, and a black lipstick. You never know it was her, but I could recognize the woman who gave birth to me no matter what she was wearing. Another woman, dressed almost the same way, came out of another car and met her. They both hugged tightly for a bit too long. They talked for a very long time and kept exchanging tight long hugs every few minutes. I took pictures of everything. Finally, when it seemed like the discussion had ended, they gave each other another very tight hug and then a kiss. One on each cheek, one on the nose, the jaw, and the forehead. Something was going on. My suspicions were finally confirmed when they finally shared one on the lips. It lasted a little bit too long, so I took a lot of pictures. They parted ways, got into their separate cars, and left. I followed mom home, making sure I printed all the pictures immediately after I got home. I invited Lit over for dinner. Cash the check and save it in your account. We're still going on that vacation. Once you're done with that, pack your things and come home. I'm inviting you over for dinner. Are you sure about that? Your mom will be home. I'm sure. Mom was surprised to see Lit for dinner, but didn't say anything. Once we were done with our prayers and started opening the dishes, everyone noticed that there was a picture of Mom either kissing or hugging a woman stuck on their dish covers. Mom burst into tears and tried to run inside, but I stopped her. Explain this and why you gave Lit a million dollars to leave me. Everyone was surprised. Mom confessed. Apparently, she used to have a girlfriend back in university. The lady had a short meeting in our town and was already leaving, so she was just telling her goodbye. Dad knew about this woman. So, if you had a girlfriend, why have you been so mean to Lit? I went through a lot of terrible things because of who I liked. And I just didn't want any of you to go through the same thing. Mom's secret was out, so she was forced to become nice to Lit. Lit and I later got married, and she's the best thing that has ever happened to me to date. But do you know what the best part of the story is? We got to keep the million dollars. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to get a million dollars ever in your life. Bye! Hey, Stanley! Yes, sir? You'll be doubling as a waiter tonight. So, once you're done cleaning, get dressed in a suit and get ready to serve the guests. Um, sir, I'm supposed to close by 7 p.m. That's the end of work hours for me, sir. Well, not today. You'll probably be here till tomorrow morning. One of the waiters fell ill, so you'll have to take his place. Sir, does this mean I'll be paid his wage instead since he won't be coming in? The director burst into laughter. <laughs> Dream on, Stan. You're not getting paid a dime for the extra hours you'll be working. If you're not happy with that, feel free to quit. There are millions of janitors ready to replace you. And in case you don't know, these people are happy to be paid half your salary for more work. Half of $2 per hour? I asked, surprised. Who in the world would want to be paid a dollar per hour? I only took this job because I was dying of hunger. Sir, could I just get a tiny little bit of money from you? You didn't tell me about the event earlier, so I didn't bring anything decent to wear. I have to go back home, pick up something, and come back. He rolled his eyes and gave me my exact payment for the day. Nothing for the transport to go home and return again on the same day. Sir, this is my payment for the day. I'm aware. If I go home and come right back with this, I'll not be able to go home after the event or even get something to eat. I haven't had anything for almost two days. And you look so strong and healthy, I think you should starve yourself for a few more days so you'd feel better. I could feel the tears roll down my face as he walked away. I rounded my cleaning up and walked to the gate, but a security officer stopped me. Stan, my boy, what's up? Going home? Not really. I have to get something decent to wear and come back.
Why? You're done for the day? The director gave me extra work. I'm doubling as a waiter tonight. Oh, that's good news. Uh, extra cash, huh? The tears that formed in my eyes answered his question. Completed the school fees yet? I burst into tears. No, I think I may have to drop out. He patted my back, feeling sorry for me. Follow me. He took me to his locker, where he brought me out a worn-out suit. It was baggy and kind of torn, but I was so grateful. I knelt down and hugged his legs. Please, stop it. He said as he went back to his position, squeezing 20 bucks into my hand before leaving. This action meant the whole world to me because I knew that he wasn't getting paid much either, as we were grossly underpaid and undervalued in the company. Hi, my name is Stanley, and today I'm sharing how I escaped the shackles of poverty and became a billionaire by doing something simple. Hit the like and subscribe button if you also want to become a billionaire without breaking a sweat. The event tonight was a fundraiser hosted by a crazy billionaire called The Mad King. I ran around serving drinks, snacks, and cleaning up after people. The Mad King donated to various charities that night, and the crowd went wild with happiness. Guys, 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 calm down. I know you all love me. Yeah! yeah! The crowd replied, Phew, look at these waiters running around and cleaning up after us. Such a hard and unappreciated job. Do you guys know that I once worked as a waiter? What? what? No. no. Impossible. Impossible. I, I don't, don't believe it. it. Really? really? Yep, I did. This is your lucky day, waiters, because today I'll be giving you all $10,000 each. Oh. We all jumped happily. Our director quickly climbed up the stage and took a different mic. Wow, you're even more amazing than we all thought. Sir, we respect you so much. He said while bowing down to the Mad King. Who are you? The Mad King looked concerned. I'm the director of this event hall, sir. I'll be taking the money for all the waiters whom I'm in charge of. We are six in number. Oh, of course. Great. The Mad King wrote down six $10,000 checks and gave them to our director. First of all, there were only five waiters. Secondly, why did he need to take our checks? I mean, we have hands. As the director walked past us with an evil smirk on his face, we knew that we'd probably never see our $10,000 checks, ever. There was no way I was going to let this happen, though. I needed money to solve a lot of problems. I needed to pay for school, rent, medicine, my sick and dying mother's medical treatment, and much more. I couldn't let him just walk away with my $10,000 gift. So I followed him and stopped him in the hallway close to the kitchen. Director, please wait. Could I have my own check? I just want to keep it safe myself. Thank you so much for receiving it on my behalf, sir. The director turned slowly while staring me down. Get lost, fool. You work for me, so your money is my money. Your gifts are my gifts. You're not getting any check. I burst into tears for the third time that night. Please, sir, I beg you, please. I need some money for school fees, rent, feeding, medicine, and medical bills for my mother. Even if it's just $1,000 from the $10,000 that you'll give me, I'm fine with that. I promise never to say anything about the extra $10,000 checks that you collected. Stanley, are you deaf? I said you're not getting a dime. Okay, sir, could you give me $500 then? I saw the anger on his face. What about 100? I just need to get some medicine for my mother. The director stretched his hands towards me like he was accepting to give me the $100. But all of a sudden, his fist was flying at me and all I saw was black. When I finally opened my eyes, I felt myself being pushed in something like a cart. Everywhere was dark, but from a tiny hole in the container I found myself in, which seemed to be a cupboard. I could see that I was being wheeled out of the hallway into the hall where the event was happening. I tried to say something but noticed that my mouth was gagged and covered with duct tape. No one could hear me. My hands and feet were also tied up so I couldn't move. What the heck was wrong with our director? Whoever was wheeling me stopped when he got into the hall and just left me at a corner. At that very moment, the Mad King picked up his mic to make an announcement. Fans and lovers, I'm going to change someone's life today. We're going to play a game right now. You see that cake there? He pointed towards me, and everyone looked on top of the cupboard that I'd been locked in. I've hidden a tiny check of one billion dollars inside it. The waiters are going to cut the cake into tiny pieces and share it, and one lucky person will win the money. Obviously, the crowd didn't trust the waiters to cut the cake to avoid them winning the money. They gently inched towards the cake. At this point, I realized that I was in danger. I had to get out as quickly as possible. I struggled and managed to free my hands and feet. After that, I gagged myself and tried to sneak out, but I was too late. So, this is how it's gonna work. After… The crowd didn't need to hear more from the Mad King because the cake was already surrounded and people were pinching around it. 
When others noticed the people pinching, they started pinching too, and next thing, a fight broke out while I struggled to escape amidst the chaos. As elegantly dressed men and women plunged their hands into the expensive cake, eating and searching it like mad people, I carefully crawled out of the cupboard. Unfortunately, the mad crowd managed to knock me out in the chaos. I didn't know how long I was out, but a heavy splash of cold water brought back my consciousness. You've breached your own employment contract by getting drunk and passing out while on duty. As a result of this, you won't be paid for a full day of work. What? I didn't drink anything. I was knocked out by the crazy crowd. Two days for lying. What? How can you do this? This is all your fault. You knocked me out, gagged me, and put me in the cake covered in direct danger. I could have been killed. You should be arrested for this. Three days for threatening your boss. I felt a familiar pang of resentment in my soul, but I just kept quiet. Still have something to say, Stanley? I just stared at him angrily. Four days for giving me a bad look. But look at it this way, Stan. You're free to quit if you're unsatisfied with your job. Feel free to quit anytime. Stanley. Huh? It's Stanley. Only close friends are allowed to call me Stan, and you're not one of them. Five days then, Stan. He looked at me expecting a reply or a bad look, but I just kept quiet and looked at the floor, defeated. When he was satisfied, he left. I got up to start cleaning. The hall was empty and everyone had gone home. After standing up, I noticed that I had been lying on a huge chunk of cake. I was so happy to see this because I hadn't eaten in a while. The cake was a little bit squashed and dirty, but I didn't mind at all. I happily ate it straight from the floor. While trying to swallow, I noticed that a hard paper was blocking my throat. I curiously pulled it out and couldn't believe what I saw. It was a tiny, customized check card of one billion dollars. What? So no one found the check after last night's madness? People must have gone home feeling pretty stupid. No wonder my director was the last to go. I guess he stayed back to make sure there was no cake unturned or squashed in this case. Unfortunately for him though, he didn't find the one I was laying on. Could this be real? I was probably still unconscious and simply dreaming. I put the tiny check in my pocket and continued cleaning. It was Sunday and I had to round up quickly so I could go spend the day with my mom. When I got home, I noticed that the check was still in my pocket. This was real after all. I wasn't dreaming. I really won one billion dollars. After keeping the check in a safe place, I spent the day talking and laughing with my mother. Tell me the good news. What do you mean, mom? I can see it in your eyes. I know something good has happened. Shh. It's a secret. You can't tell anyone no matter what, okay? I promise. She said in her sick voice. It made me sad that money was stopping her from getting better, but I knew that all that was coming to an end. I told her what happened, and she tried screaming, but her sickness didn't let her. She managed to jump a little bit on her chair, though, and it gave me so much happiness. First thing on Monday morning, which was the next day, I went to the bank to cash the check. On seeing such a high amount and seeing how haggard I was looking, the bank staff had to confirm by calling the owner of the check first. He gave them the go-ahead and the money was wired into my account. I couldn't believe my eyes. My account had to be upgraded because the previous account type couldn't hold such an amount. The first thing I did with my newfound wealth was to give my mother the best treatment available. I also transferred to a better school and paid all the necessary fees until graduation. I separated, then locked some money for college, invested in stocks and Bitcoin, paid my rent for a few years and bought necessities that would also last a few years. After that, I bought the company I previously worked in as a janitor. I demoted the director to a janitorial position, then forced him to give all the waiters back the money they won with interest. I collected my $10,000 from him and the $10,000 he stole and gave it to the security guard that helped me that night. I increased the salary for all the workers in the company and started paying them their standard wages. This made them happy and willing to even work more, thereby tripling the income that the company was previously making, indirectly increasing my wealth. With my wealth growing dramatically as a result of my company and investments, I started buying rental properties, which my mother started managing as she got better. The more my wealth increased, the more I invested. Two years later, I realized that I never thanked the Mad King, and that was a huge mistake. I traveled to his place with gifts and apologized. I told him that I was grateful to him for changing my life, and I wanted to work under him for free to make up for thanking him late. He laughed and said that I was the only one he had granted money who ever came back to thank him. He also accepted my proposal to work under him for free. My actual reason for wanting to work under him for free was actually so I could learn the secrets of wealth building through him, and he knew this. Besides, I didn't need to work for money anymore since my money was now working for me. To my surprise, he gave me the position of a janitor to begin with, and as disgusted as I was, 
I knew that it was simply a humility test, so I accepted it. He promoted me every six months until I finally became his personal assistant. I worked with him throughout high school and college, and it took me a few years, but I was able to learn all the secrets of wealth building and became the next mad king after the death of my master. The door flew open and mom bolted inside. Startled, I jumped up from the sofa where I was watching television. Alex, we need to trash the house to make it look like someone broke in. Mom, why? Where's Hunter? Mom stared at me blankly. Hunter got wounded and the police are on their way. Mom began to throw the cushions from the sofa on the floor. The house needs to look trashed because I told them that when we opened the front door, we were attacked. Without another word, Mom and I trashed the place. It wasn't long before we heard sirens in the distance. Everything was a blur as police officers took pictures and dusted for evidence. Mom did all the talking as she said I was still in shock. After the officers left, Mom told me the owner of the house returned home early and Hunter jumped in front of Mom to protect her. Yeah, you may be wondering about that. The only way to get your answers is to continue watching till the end. I grew up in a family of thieves. Yep, you heard correctly, thieves. We never stayed anywhere for more than a few months. Mom was the mastermind, Hunter was the brawn, and I was the invisible son. I begged Mom to let me join them, but she said I wasn't ready. She never had time for me. She and Hunter were always planning their next heist. I was heartbroken when Hunter died a few days after his incident. Only Mom and I attended Hunter's funeral. After a 15-minute sermon, the pastor left the room to give us a chance to say our last goodbyes. As Mom and I stood in front of the coffin, she kissed Hunter and said, Alex, you are the man of the house now, which means you must provide. Mom turned on her heel and walked away. Later that day, I told Mom that maybe I could get a regular job, like regular people. Mom <laughs> laughed. We are not regular people. Do you know how long you'll have to work to be able to afford what we have now? The only way to get quick money is to steal it. But mom, there must be a better way. I am accustomed to a certain lifestyle. Hunter understood that. God rest his soul. And you are now in charge of maintaining that lifestyle. I knew that the only way mom would love me was if I did what she said. The next day, I set to work. I learned to pickpocket people on the street. Then I moved on to ripping off mini marts and roadside vendors. I didn't bring in as much as mom expected, since I gave some to her and kept some for myself without her knowing. But with each heist, I brought in more, and mom paid more attention to me. Here you go, mom, I said as I handed over her share of the money one evening. She kissed me. I love you so much. I love you too, mom. Mom smiled and walked away. This had never happened before. In all of my 17 years on earth, mom had never told me that she loved me. It felt like an adrenaline rush, and I knew I needed to ramp my game up. Eventually, I dropped out of school to become a full-time thief. I went to the richest part of town and monitored every house and the movement of every family. I broke into some of those houses, but I didn't empty the safes. I took just enough so that they wouldn't know they were robbed. I didn't want to bring attention to myself. I always wore gloves and a full black cloth mask. Late one night, as I was climbing out of the window of a house I just robbed, I heard a noise behind me and I froze on the spot. Through the moonlight that bounced off the walls of the room, I saw a girl that looked my age. She walked towards me, then paused. Then, we heard a door open and shut, followed by a man calling out her name. Jessica, we're home! Uncle Derek, quick! I saw someone run down the hallway! She shouted. Fear gripped my heart as two people ran past the room we were in. Before I knew what was happening, the girl snatched the mask off my face. I jumped out the window and into the chilly night air and escaped. I jumped into my car and drove a few blocks to make sure I wasn't being followed. She didn't see my face, did she? Early next morning, I flipped through the news channels to see if there was any news about what had happened the night before. I was relieved when I didn't see anything about it. But I did see a news report that a rare diamond was going to be on exhibition at the DeVale's annual black and white party. The reporter stated that this was the first time the party was held in this town. A picture of the family was shown before they told the tragic story of Mr. and Mrs. DeVale's fatal car accident about a year ago. Their entire estate was left to their only daughter, Jessica DeVale. I looked at the picture closely. Jessica was the girl that had pulled off my mask. I needed to befriend Jessica if my plan was to work. The first thing I did was organize a few fake IDs and passports for myself. The cost of the rare diamond was estimated at $30 million, 
and I had to have an escape plan if things didn't work out as expected. I kept my eyes on Jessica, but she was always heavily surrounded by bodyguards. One night while staking out her uncle's house, I saw Jessica climb out the window, run two houses down, and jump into a car. I knew I would never get another moment like this again. I followed her and she pulled into a pizzeria. I waited until she parked and walked inside to pull into the car park and enter the pizzeria. I quickly surveyed the restaurant and found Jessica sitting at a table by herself. All the other tables were full, so after ordering my pizza, I approached her table. Hey, do you mind if I sit? No, not at all. Please do. Do you eat here often? I'm sort of nervous because I'm usually a creature of habit and I've never eaten here before. I've eaten here a few times with my parents. Don't worry, the pizza is really good. I chuckled nervously. <laughs> That's good to know. My name is Alex, by the way. I extended my hand and she shook it. I'm Jessica. For the rest of the night, Jessica and I chatted as though we were old friends. Suddenly, she looked at the clock on the wall, gasped, and quickly gathered her coat and purse. What's wrong? I've got to get home before 12. Are you afraid you'll turn into a pumpkin or something? I chuckled. She looked at me seriously. If I'm not home before my uncle gets home, I'm done for. I watched as she quickly scribbled her number on a napkin, handed it to me, and ran out of the pizzeria as though she were on fire. I shoved the napkin in my pants pocket and left the pizzeria. Over the next three weeks, Jessica and I snuck around together when she didn't have to do public events leading up to the black and white party. She never dug too deeply into my personal life and I never offered up any info. But something happened as the days of the event got closer, something that I definitely didn't plan. I fell head over heels in love with Jessica. Yeah, yeah, I know, it sounds cliche, but I've never met anyone like her before. She's funny, she's smart, and loves video games. What else could a guy ask for? I wanted to please mom and receive her love, but I also didn't want to lose Jessica. So will you be joining me tonight at the event? I think it's time I introduce you to my aunt and uncle. Sure, I'll be there. I just hope I don't make a fool of myself. Jessica <laughs> laughed. You've already won my heart. I'm sure you'll do the same with theirs. Jessica and I chatted a few more minutes before we hung up. As I pulled out my clothes and tools to prepare for the gig, my heart grew heavy. I sat on the bed and held my head in my hands. I couldn't go through with it. About an hour before the event, I called Jessica and told her that I had an emergency with mom and asked if I could meet her aunt and uncle another time. She was very understanding and she said if I needed her to just give her a call. I breathed a sigh of relief as I exhaled deeply after I hung up the phone. Around midnight, mom rushed into my room and I was jolted awake. I turned on the lamp on the nightstand and mom thrusted something into my hand. I gasped. It was the rare diamond. Alex, I need you to hide this from me. I pushed the diamond back into mom's hand. I don't want to have anything to do with this. It's times like these when I really miss Hunter. He would have done it without me having to ask twice. I sighed. Look, mom, I just don't want to have anything to do with this, okay? Let me guess. Is this because of little Miss Jessica DeVale? You really thought I wouldn't find out about the two of you? I can't believe how weak you are. Let me guess. She is the love of your life? You think Hunter and I didn't leave broken hearts wherever we went? Hide the diamond. End of discussion. Mom walked out of the room. After the black and white event, I felt so guilty the next day when Jessica told me about the robbery. I knew that I needed to get the diamond off my hands as soon as possible. Mom forced me into a position I didn't want to be in. I knew if Jessica found out that I was involved, she'd never speak to me again. That evening, I told mom to set up the private auction and get rid of the diamond the next day. I just wanted to leave this town behind and every memory of Jessica in it. On the night of the auction, mom held my hand. Don't worry, Alex. This will be our biggest haul yet. Hunter would have been proud. Auctioneers arrived in private planes, jets, and helicopters surrounded by their bodyguards. They were allowed to view and test the diamond before the bidding began. When the bidding began, it was fierce. 20 million. 25. 30 million. I bid 50 million dollars. A voice came from the back of the room. Whispers rang through the crowd. Going once, going twice, sold for 50 million dollars. The person stepped up from the back of the room. It was Jessica. Hello, Alex. Surprised to see me? Please bring your cash to the back room so it can be counted, ma'am. Jessica laughed. <laughs> you really think I'm going to pay for something that you stole from me? Just like your family stole my parents? What are you talking about, first off? I didn't steal anything, and- Shut up! Jessica screeched, her hands clenched. Auctioneers began to leave as though they knew something was about to go down. Your mother and Hunter killed my parents in a car accident. 
They knocked my parents' car into an intersection and the car was struck. Unluckily for me, I survived. But I remembered the license plate, which was tracked back to your family. You really think I didn't know who you were the first night we met? The hunter became the hunted. Now that we have you and your mother red-handed for the diamond, I have one last thing to say. Arrest them! Police swarmed the auction house. My eyes searched frantically for mom, but she was nowhere to be seen. I squeezed through the crowd and darted through the other abandoned warehouses on the lot. It wasn't difficult to lose the police since the shadows of the warehouses gave great cover. I knew that parking in the parking lot of the warehouse wasn't a good idea, and I'm glad I trusted my instincts and parked a few blocks away. I knew that by now, officers would be waiting at home for me. I made a trip to the cemetery to collect the savings I had stashed as well as my fake ID and passports. My stash was buried behind Hunter's gravestone in a metal container. I grabbed everything quickly and went to the airport to catch a flight to anywhere. Upon arrival at the airport, I avoided the cameras and tried to act as though my heart wasn't racing. I smiled as I paid for a ticket and even made polite conversation. I purchased a hat and shades from one of the stores at the airport, which I wore as I waited for my flight to call. Just as my flight called, I noticed someone showing the guard a picture and pointing in my direction. As the guard walked towards me, I turned in the opposite direction. The guard quickly called for backup and it wasn't long before I was pinned to the ground being handcuffed. I looked up and the woman who showed the guard the pic took off her shades. She placed her fingers on her lips and smiled. She quickly showed me the diamond in her hand and walked away. I closed my eyes. I couldn't believe my own mother would rat me out to the police. I got sentenced to 15 years in jail for stealing the rare diamond. I figured this was my punishment for the crimes I did commit that the police didn't know about or the price I had to pay to receive mom's love. After all, I did allow her to get away. Some children are loved when they get good grades, while others are loved for a life of crime. I don't regret anything I did, and if I had to do it over, I'll do it again. All I ever wanted was mom's love, and I was able to get that even though it was for a short period of time and came at a very high cost.